All right, so let's see how we can think of Sturmervilli as a variational integrator. Okay, so uh, so Sturmervilli is, is typically written. It's like uh, for a, a simple mechanical system uh, with a Lagrangian of the following form. So let's consider uh, a Lagrangian L, which is given by uh, one half uh, q dot transpose uh, m q dot minus uh, v of q. All right, and. Um, and you uh, typically think of uh, the Verlet method as a map from, uh, so Verlet is typically sort of viewed as a map from uh, Q cross Q uh, to itself, All right? Uh, and in particular, say uh, QK, uh, Qk plus one to uh, Qk plus one, uh, Qk plus two. All right, uh, and and it is uh, defined by the following. Uh, this kind of uh, sort of three-term recurrence that uh, Qk plus one is equal to two uh, Qk minus Qk minus one. Uh, plus h squared uh, alpha k, where alpha k is an acceleration-like term, where uh, alpha k is equal to uh, m inverse. It's like negative the gradient of the potential at the point v k. Right. Uh, so, uh, so this is of course the external force term, uh, and then if you take the the inverse, it's like by the mass matrix that gives you the acceleration. Right. Force equals the mass times acceleration, if you will. All right. So this alpha k is really just the acceleration term. Um, so you can check that this is really just the uh, um, Lagrangian, uh, discrete Lagrangian map uh, for either of two discrete Lagrangians. So this is the discrete Lagrangian map. Let's see, FLD, right, which is a map from Q cross Q to itself, right, for either of this. Um, LD0, right, Q1, Q0, Q1, H is uh, just HL Q0. Uh, Q1 minus Q0 over H, or LD1, uh, Q0, Q1, H is uh, HL, Q1, Q1 minus Q0 over H. Okay, so you can check that, uh, or any combination, if you will, of these two, or any affine combination. So in particular, let's consider sort of the symmetric version. Uh, so consider the symmetric version. Okay. All right. So let's say LD uh, Q0 Q1 of H is one half HL uh, Q Q1 minus Q0 over H plus one half uh, HL Q1, Q1 minus Q0 over H. So this you can think of as uh, being something like what you would get if you uh, interpolated the curve um, between Q0 and Q1. It's like by, again, a linear interpolant. Uh, then approximate the action integral by uh, the trapezoid rule, right? So, um, so that's sort of one way of thinking about this. Um, and so let's see what happens, okay? Um, 
So the claim is that if you take this discrete Lagrangian uh, and you look at the corresponding uh, discrete uh, Lagrangian map, you get Verlet as your um, discrete Lagrangian map. Okay. Um, so let's see. All right. So let's. So I should say this gives you. Is Frelay as uh, F L D. Okay. So let's look at the um, sort of discrete Hamiltonian map. So look at uh, F tilde L D. Okay. So F tilde L D looks like the following. Okay, so this gives you pk is equal to um, minus d1 ld uh, qk qk plus 1 h, and then this is equal to um, the mass matrix. Okay, so here I'm going to uh, use uh, the specific form of the uh, Lagrangian and then hence the Hamiltonian. Okay, so um, all right, um, well, I guess just the Lagrangian is fine in this case. So this is m uh, qk plus 1 minus qk over h. This is like a mass times velocity like term plus 1 half h, the gradient of the potential evaluated at qk. Uh, and then pk plus 1 is d2 ld uh, qk, qk plus 1 h, which is going to be, again, uh, mass times uh, this velocity-like term, okay, plus, well, minus, sorry, minus one-half h gradient of the potential at uh, v uh, at qk plus one. Okay, so if you subtract the uh, first equation from the second equation, uh, and then you solve for, uh, so subtracting, well, you know, if you subtract the two equations in each other, you would get rid of, uh, you know, the, uh, this, these terms, okay? So, um, So you subtract the uh, first equation from the second, and then you solve for plus one. Okay. And then what will happen? Let's see. Okay, you get uh, QK plus one is equal to QK plus uh, H M inverse PK. Okay, plus one half H squared M inverse applied to minus the gradient of the potential evaluated at QK. And then uh, pk plus 1 is equal to pk plus h 
times negative the, the average of the uh, forces, if you will, at QK and QK plus 1. So if you, yeah, if you subtract the first equation to the second equation, you get uh, this equation here, right? Uh, and then, um, and then if you solve for the, uh, okay, so maybe I should write this uh, a bit more carefully, all right? So this equation comes from, okay, so let's label this, this equation one and equation two. Okay, so this comes from solve for QK plus one from equation one, okay? And then this thing comes from um, subtracting uh, equation two, um, equation one from equation two, so two minus one. All right, and then solving for pk plus one. Okay, all right, so, so maybe that's uh, a little bit clearer where these things come from. All right, so um, yes, so if you look at this, right, this just says qk plus one minus qk, um, right? Um, Well, and anyway, so it's sort of bottom line, if you will, is that if you look at this very first equation here, that pk is equal to m qk plus one minus qk over h, it's like time plus, it's like one half h times the um, force, it's like at qk, it's like and if you think of solving this for qk plus one, right, then you move this over to the left hand side, you take the inverse uh, by m and you multiply by h, uh, and then you move uh, qk plus one over and then you end up exactly getting these things here. Okay, and then uh, the second equation just comes from subtracting equation one from equation two and then solving for pk plus one. Okay, so anyway, so, so these things are called the velocity form of the Verlet method. Okay, so this is the velocity Verlet method. Okay, uh, and uh, this is a map which is a map from uh, T star Q to itself now. Okay, all right, um, yes. Okay, so, so this is, uh, you know, so anyway, so this is the discrete Lagrangian uh, associated with the uh, velocity form of the relay method, uh, and then if you just care about the usual relay method, which is a map from Q cross Q to itself, then uh, either one of these uh, sort of versions or any some sort of uh, convex combination of these would work as well. All right. So anyway, so in a nutshell, that's uh, that's how one way of uh, interpreting uh, stream of relay. It's like as a variational integrator, um, and uh, the way one way of interpreting again that form of the discrete Lagrangian is that you do this linear interpolation of the boundary data between Q uh, at time zero, it's like in Q at time H, uh, then you approximate the um, integral, it's like by uh, the trapezoidal rule, and then that's what you end up getting, right? So let me stop here.